In this project, we'll be exploring fixing floating point precision issues, logarithmic depth buffers, and problems of scale. It's been a while, but in the last videos we introduced floating origins as a way of expanding our worlds to actual planetary-sized things, instead of dinky little asteroids and moons. But going planet scale brings planet scale problems, and we were left with a bit of a mess. So today we're addressing those problems. Specifically, we want to be able to stand here on the ground and look around and everything looks fine. And then we want to zoom out to deep into space and float there and everything still looks fine. But we don't want this. See how the ground textures look kind of chunky and generally pretty crappy? And if we go out a bit, look at all the Zed fighting and problems with the terrain. Let's start with the Zed fighting. First thing we need to do is understand exactly what is in the depth buffer. We touched on this a bit in the soft particles video, but basically when you transform coordinates through to screen or window coordinates, you go through a few spaces. The perspective W divide here makes the transformation non-linear, and since W is actually the view depth, then the final depth value is directly related to 1 over Z. I did the whole derivation in that video, but in short, the view space depth is equal to the far times the near plane divided by the z final times far minus near minus far. Okay, what does that mean? Let's graph that. So we'll end up with a graph that looks something like this. View space depth is along the x-axis, and the values in the depth buffer are the y-axis. And this is so steep that we can barely make out what's happening. So let's change it to log scale. Now that it's clearer, Notice some crazy things, like nearly all of the precision is clumped up near the near plane. Like only one meter past the near plane, we used up nearly 50% of the depth values already. And at 10 meters, 90% of depth values are used up. This obviously depends on which near and far plane you use. But depth buffers aren't infinite precision, so let's simulate this using a depth buffer with, say, 8 bits of precision. That means on the left, we have 256 discrete possibilities for the values in the depth buffer. By the time you're 100 meters out, you can barely distinguish between an object that's 100 meters and 200 meters away. And past that, a single value has to cover the last 80% of the range, which is just absurd. So what do we want? To draw planetary scales, we probably want the graph to look more like this, with the slope of the line looking pretty straight when plotted with log scale meaning the depth values are allocated more evenly depending on distance. There is an older technique called W-buffering, which basically used linear depth values, but that never caught on. There's no hardware support, but it gives us a nice idea on what the solution to this might look like. Let's talk solutions. Somewhat known in DirectX circles, you can use an inverted floating point depth buffer, but NVIDIA outlines here in this article why it doesn't work in WebGL, since you need a specific extension. Another great trick is something called logarithmic depth buffers, which has been written about a couple times, each having slightly different approaches. The general idea is to write out your own depth using log scaling. So plunking that into our graph, we get damn near a straight line. And examining the values, what ends up happening is that we've pushed some of that somewhat useless precision that was right by the near plane much further out. Let's code this up. So I feel kind of bad because that explanation made this sound like it was going to be a hassle to implement, but it's just passing a value from the vertex to fragment shader and then writing out GL frag depth using that log equation. So yeah, just a couple quick lines of code and you're good to go. We can look around and the problems have kind of evaporated. Now keep in mind, this isn't totally free. Writing to GL frag depth can hurt some hardware optimizations, but it's not a big deal. And if you're using 3.js and the default shaders, you can just enable logarithmic depth buffers during initialization, and it's all done magically for you. But there's one problem. If you haven't spotted it already, I'll give you a second. Notice the scattering? It's gone. The problem now is that we're writing log depth out to the depth buffer, which means when we read the depth buffer, we need to convert it back. And we have to do this ourselves, since 3.js doesn't implement that. Here in the shader, we're going to reconstruct the view space depth by reversing the log calculation. So if v depth equals 1 plus w, w being view space depth, and the depth buffer value is log 2 v depth times x, reversed, this should be view depth equals 2 to the power value divided by x minus 1. And then to recreate world space, we can construct a clip space coordinate, reverse the projection, and set the magnitude. 
and we're all good. The scattering is back, but there's a second problem, which is the textures look terrible. And the problem is that we're trying to work with these massive world space coordinates in the fragment shader. My first solution was, what if we could wrap the coordinates into some sort of repeating range, like a sine wave? So I hit up the vertex shader and ran them through a sine function. And it's almost, it kind of works, but we get these weird stretchy bands near the peaks and troughs of the sine wave. So almost, but not quite. Luckily on Wikipedia, I found this, a triangle wave, which is a non-sinusoidal wave that goes up and down linearly, so hopefully no stretchy bands. The vertex shader code is straightforward, just need to drop and replace the sign with the uh, triangle wave function, and we're all good to go. Problem's largely gone at this point. I'm not sure if those triangle waves are the ultimate solution here, but they've at least tucked the problem away nicely, so I'm calling it a win, at least for now. If you have better ideas, definitely let me know. Otherwise, subscribe, buy me a coffee on Patreon, and I'll see you later. Cheers.